That leaves investors wondering whether after yesterday's record gains for all major indices, all five of them, can the stock market continue to celebrate? And should your portfolio celebrate? Let's bring in Wall Street's most followed and closely, widely looked at economist, Allianz Chief Economic Advisor, Mohammed El Arian. Thank you for being here, Mohammed. Considering most of the job loss carnage came from travel, leisure, and restaurants, what message are you getting from this report as it pertains to people's portfolio positioning? So not much in terms of portfolio. A lot about the economy, Liz, but not much in terms of portfolio. What it tells you is the economy is weakening. I worry that the next job report will also involve job losses. And that is coming at a time when the labor market is already suffering. So the economy is weakening and weakening quickly. The markets are focused elsewhere. They're focused on stimulus. They are focused on central banks. And I suspect the markets will continue to brush off the news on the economy. And the path of least resistance for now continues to be up. OK. Uh, and yet you look at these numbers. Now the Dow is, is solidly, well, 13 points to the upside. I'm calling that solidly positive here. S&P better by 12. The Nasdaq up 87. It just appears that this disconnect between what's going on currently with the economy and then, of course, the froth in the markets is, is still very much in play. Do you ride this wave? So first, this is the biggest disconnect I've ever seen, and I could have never imagined that the markets could be so disconnected. But then I would have never imagined that the central banks would pump in so much liquidity that would end up in the marketplace. That's why there's this notion of a rational bubble. It is a bubble because it's unrelated to, to fundamentals, but it's rational because it depends on all these injections of liquidity. Look, I tell people it depends on how comfortable you feel with a rational bubble. That is what you're investing in right now. And if you feel comfortable, go right ahead. I admire people who do feel completely comfortable. I like to be selective. I like to have <laughs> yeah. defensive elements to my positioning. But you know what? That is, has been the right call. Serve the wave for as long as it lasts. Just make sure you get off it in case it gets interrupted. And we saw today how sensitive the market is to various talk about stimulus. Of course. And, and that's exactly what Joe Biden just said in the last, uh, I want to call it uh, 13 minutes. He said that he will spend trillions. But I, I need to show our viewers the 10-year bond yield. For the first time since, what, nine months ago, it finally hit 1.1 percent. So as you look at that, you know, this has been the, these extraordinarily low bond yields of 0.5 percent, 0.6 percent. Now we're at 0.118 at the moment, 1.118. Is the allure of equity still as strong when the actual exact thing on your screen, the 10-year Treasury yield, which had been so much lower and underpinned? and buttress these markets, is the allure still there if these yields continue to rise? For equities, is the allure there, I mean? It is for now, but keep an eye on that. That has become the most important number to look at. Um, I look at it first thing every morning, because the higher the yield goes, the more problematic for markets. One, because of relative attractiveness, as you just pointed out. Two, because it puts the Fed in a really difficult position. Um, the Fed will not be happy to see the yield go up despite the trillions of dollars it's been buying in bonds. So keep an eye on that. That is perhaps the most critical number right now. It's still manageable, but we can't continue to see it go higher and higher and expect the equity market to go higher. Is there a tipping point? Is there a support level where you'd say now it's not manageable anymore? You know, it's, the, I, those questions are really hard to answer because they, they deal with psychology and behaviors. Um, the question that everybody will ask is, what is your tipping point? Because they'll want to know what the other person's tipping point is. And you never get a handle <laughs> on this. So, yes, there is a tipping point. I don't know what it is, Liz. OK. Uh, Richard Clarida, the vice chair, today said that rates will stay at current levels until, meaning Fed funds, futures rates, Fed funds rates, until inflation exceeds 2% for some duration. So uh, current levels. And then he also said that they keep the bond purchases going till uh, the end of 2021. I mean, uh, that's shorter than what we had heard before from Jay Powell, the chief of the Federal Reserve, which was 2023. 
Yeah, but I, I wouldn't I wouldn't worry too much. I mean, the minutes that came out on Wednesday tell you that the mm -hmm. Fed has no desire to taper. And when it tapers, it's going to do really carefully and very gradually. I think the problem, and we're seeing it in the marketplace, is that the Fed can control anything up to the two, three-year, and maybe even four-year point of the bond market, but it can't control the 10 and 30-year. And that's what the market has been looking at. Yeah. Yeah. And finally, uh, any points of froth in the market? We've got we've got SPAC land with all of these SPACs that have done incredibly well, not to mention Bitcoin, which was above 40, 41,000 earlier today. Anything worry you about that? Oh, lots worry. You're looking at someone who who bought Bitcoin below five, sold them at 19 and thought they had done well and watched it double uh. in, in less than a month. <laughs> oh, <Ahmed>. OK. <laughs> I mean, if I, yeah, I mean, there's lots and lots of evidence of excessive risk taking, um, but so far it's been well rewarded. Um, you can keep this game going. I want to stress, you can keep it going by pumping more and more liquidity. But these are artificial valuations, so just be careful out there. Mohammed, have a good weekend, and and thank you very much. Great to have you on the show. We'll see you next time.